Hey guys, it's Miss STEM Tutor here. Today we're going to talk about redox reactions, which is basically the same as oxidation reduction reactions. And we're going to talk about how to balance these type of equations through the half reaction method. And in this video, I'll give you guys a list of the steps you should follow when you face this type of question, as well as two examples, including acidic and basic redox reactions. So first, I want to tell you guys the steps that you should follow to balance redox reactions. And we will go ahead and apply these steps later on in two examples of acidic and basic. So first, you have to divide the entire chemical equation into two half reactions. And how do you do that? By oxidation and reduction. Oxidation means that you are losing electrons, and reduction means that you are gaining electrons. And don't worry, we will go over this in the example as well. So second, you're going to balance all the elements except H and O. So make sure that their moles, the number of moles, are the same. And third, you're going to balance all the oxygens by adding waters to each side of the equation. Then you're going to balance all the hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions to both sides. Perfect. And then you're going to balance the charge, lastly, by adding all the electrons to each side. So when you try to recombine these half reactions, right, you want to make the number of moles of electrons equal for both half reactions. This way, when you add them, you're going to have an easier time to cancel out all the electrons and help you cancel out the leftover terms. So number eight only applies if it's a basic solution. So if they tell you it's an acidic solution, just follow one, two, seven, and nine, check both charges on both sides, and then you're done. If it's basic, you have an extra step. If it's basic, you do number eight, which means that when you have, you see the excess hydrogen ions, right? You just have to add the same number of hydroxides to each side of the balance of the equation. So why would you do that, right? If you do that, this will create water. The waters will then likely cancel. In this case, you have a basic solution. So if it's acidic, follow 1 through 7 and 9 to finally check all of your charges. And if it's basic, do 1 through 9. And don't worry, we will go over them right now in two examples. Let's start with an acidic example. So I'm telling you that this is an acidic solution. So that means that you don't have to worry about step number 8. So how do we start this question, right? We have to divide the entire chemical reaction into two half reactions. So which one's being oxidized? Which one's being reduced? Let's take a look. So for our iron here, for iron, we have a 2 plus charge on the left side. We have a 3 plus charge on the right side. What happened from 2 plus to 3 plus? It actually lost one electron. So it's being oxidized. Okay, and let's look at the manganese next. So for the manganese, we have a, okay, we have an overall charge of negative on MnO4. So oxygen brings two minus charge times four, which is negative eight. That means that manganese have to have a plus seven charge for the entire compound to have a negative one charge. Okay, and let's look at the right side. Manganese has a two plus charge. So what happened from plus 7 to plus 2. It actually gained electrons, so it is being reduced. So we know manganese is reduced and iron is being oxidized. Now we can write our two equations. So our first equation is going to be the reduction reaction. So in this case, MnO4- minus became Mn2+. Plus. And then in our second equation, it's going to be the oxidation reaction, where Fe2 plus became Fe3 plus. Perfect. So now that we have our two half reactions, let's balance all of the elements except hydrogen and oxygen. Let's look at the first equation. Okay, seems like Mn is both, it's both balanced on both sides of the equation. So we're good there, and so is equation number two, right? Because they have the same number of moles. Next, let's balance all the oxygens by adding hydrogen H2O, by adding H2O to each side of the equation. So let's balance on the first equation. We have four oxygen on the left side. So we need four oxygen on the right side. So what are we supposed to do? We are going to simply add four H2O on the right side. Now we have four oxygen on the left side, four oxygen on the right side. Perfect. Number two, we have no oxygen here, so we are good. So step number four, we're going to add all of the hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions. 
In our first equation, we see we have eight hydrogens on the right side, right? So what we have to do is we have to add eight hydrogen ions on the left side. This way, number of hydrogens balance on both sides. Perfect. Now let's look at number two. Our equation number two is perfect because there's no hydrogen, so we move on. Step number five, we're going to balance all of the charge by adding electrons to each side of the equation. Let's take a look at the charges. So in our equation number one, we have eight positive minus one, so we have a positive seven charge. And on our right side, we have a positive two charge because two plus zero, right? So seven to two, how do we balance the number of charge? We have to add five electrons on the left side. So 7 minus 5 is plus 2. Now we have it all equal. And look at our equation number 2. We have a positive 2 from Fe2+. plus. We have a positive 3 from Fe3+, plus on the right side. So to balance this equation, what we need to do is add one electron onto the right side of the second equation. So now we have all the charge balanced by adding all the electrons on each side of the equation. We're going to multiply these half reaction by a factor so all the electrons are equal right so we have five electrons on the top we have one electron on the bottom we're going to multiply the bottom equation by five so that we can have five electrons on the right side this way when you add together equation one and two you can immediately cancel out the five electrons so let's write it rewrite it out for you real quick we have five e minus plus h plus and manganese oxygen O4. Okay, so that's our first equation, all finalized. Our second equation is going to look at 5Fe2 plus because we multiply by 5, 5Fe3 plus, and 5 electrons. So when we add them together, we're going to see 5 electrons on equation number 1 on left side and five electrons on equation number two on the right side so when we add them obviously cancels out so this is why we multiply by a factor right so that when we add them the electrons automatically disappear so now let's add them together on the bottom let's write our answer it's gonna have 8h plus plus mno4 minus plus 5fe2 plus and M and 2 plus on the top with the waters and the iron ions, 3 plus. So make sure you add in the states. This is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is also aqueous, and this is aqueous because they're ions, right? And then this is liquid because it's water, and we have aqueous. And that here is our final answer. It doesn't seem like we have to simplify anymore, and we're done with our acidic example. So next, we have a base example, right? I'm telling you it's a basic solution. That means that you have to follow all steps one through nine. So first, let's take a look at zinc. Zinc on the left side, you have zero charge, and on the right side, you have positive charge. So from zero to two plus, that means that you actually lost, some, lost some electrons, right? So that means that zinc is being oxidized okay and nitrogen let's look at nitrogen so obviously we know that oxygen has a two minus charge and if you have three times two minus that means that you have a negative six charge and that n have to have a five plus charge for the whole entire no3 minus to have a negative charge so five plus on the left side and let's let's look at n on the right side so obviously you know o has a two minus charge so that means 2 times 2 minus is going to be negative 4. To overcome that completely to 0, that means that n has to have a 4 plus charge. So from 5 plus to 4 plus, what happened? Did we gain or did we lose an electron? We gain an electron. So that means that n is being reduced. Okay. n is reduced, zinc is oxidized. So then we can write our two equations. Here we go. Our first equation is going to have zinc, right? So Zn2, Zn2+. plus. Okay, perfect. Now our second equation is going to have all the nitrogens, right? It's going to have 
NO3 minus 2, NO2 on the right side. So now that we have our two half reactions, right, let's balance all of the elements except H and O, like our step two. So in our first one, we see that zinc is all balanced, one mole to one mole ratio, perfect. And let's look at our second one. Our second one, N is also balanced. And remember, we don't balance the oxygen here, although it looks tempting because we balance all of the elements except H and O first. So we don't have to actually touch anything. We are good with step number two. And let's do step number three, where we balance all of the oxygens by adding H2Os. On equation number one, we don't have oxygen, so we are good. And on equation number two, hmm, we have three oxygen on the left side and we have two oxygen on the right side. So how are we going to balance this, right? Well, you, you can just balance the oxygen by adding one H2O to the right side. So now don't you have three oxygen on the right side and three oxygen on the left side? Perfect. So move on to step number four, where we balance the number of hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions. Number one, we're good. We don't have any hydrogen. So number two, since we just added two hydrogen to the right side, we got to add two hydrogens onto the left side. So it's going to be two H plus on the left side. And look, now we have two and two on both sides. We're good with number four. Let's go on to step number five, where we balance all of the charges by adding electrons to each side of the equations. So on the left side, it has a zero charge. And on the right side, there's a two plus charge. So we need to add two electrons to the right side. If we add two electrons to the right side, two minus two is zero. So zero and zero, we're balanced. On the, on the second equation, let's see. We have two plus minus one is plus one, okay? And on the right side, we have zero. So what we got to do is we add one electron to the left side of this. So now don't we have negative one plus two minus one, zero, and zero on the right side. So we're all balanced. Perfect. So next, what we're going to do is multiply by the number by a number to make sure that the moles of electrons are equal on both sides, right? What do you see? What do you think we should do? Think about it. And then here we go. So we need to multiply the second equation by two. Once we do that, you have two electrons on the left side of the second equation and two electrons on the right side of the first equation. And when you add them, it's going to cancel out, right? So let's try to write this out as our final form. We have Zn goes to Zn2 plus. Oh, that arrow was, looks bubbly. Okay. Zn to Zn2 plus plus two electrons. Second equation. One electron on the left plus two H plus NO3 minus goes to NO2 plus H2O. Okay, but take a look again. Are we missing something? Right. We have to multiply by the two factor that just happened. So two minus here and over here, it's going to be four hydrogens. And over here, it's going to be two NO3 minus. Okay. And on the right side, same applies. You're going to have two and two. So that's important, right? Remember you Never forget to multiply by the factor. Or later when you add them, you're going to be like, oh, I can't cancel out all the electrons. So let's take a look. Everything looks right. And let's add them. So electrons wise, this and this completely cancel out because we're adding them, right? And let's look at the other equation and go ahead and add them together. So we have on the left side, zinc plus 4H plus plus 2NO3 minus goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2NO2. That 2 is kind of stuck. And 2H2O. Now that we have this, we're done. But are we actually done? No, we're not. Mm, yep. It's a basic solution, right? So what do we need to do in the basic solution? We have excess hydrogens, right? Right here, we have some excess hydrogens. So what we need to do is add four hydroxides to both sides, right? In this case, 
then we can just completely cancel out the hydrogens. So on the left side, what will we have? Can you see what's happening? Well, take a minute, pause the video, and try this question. Okay, let's go through it together. So on the left side, you're going to have four hydrogens. No, sorry, four H2Os because you added four hydrogens to four four hydrogen ions to four hydroxide ions. So you're going to have that and then 2NO3 minus. On the right side, you're going to have zinc 2 plus 2NO2 plus 2H2O. All right. And let's take a look. Do, do you not see something here? Because I see something, right? This can actually be simplified even more. So in the end, your answer is going to be zinc plus 2H2O because you subtracted it to the left side and you add 2NO3 minus aqueous. We got to put on all the states, right? Zn2 plus aqueous plus 2NO2. All right. Actually, guys, did we forget something? Yes. Over here, we have four hydroxides. That was from before, right? So we have two nitrogens here and four hydroxides. Perfect. Put on all the states, liquid, aqueous, aqueous, you know, aqueous, aqueous, and yep, we are done. This is our answer to the basic example. All right, guys, that's the end of the video, and I hope you know how to balance redox reactions now. Make sure you follow the nine steps and you will be golden. All good. And if it's basic, remember, add on the hydroxide ions. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell. See you guys soon.